People always ask me, how do I get these wires turned in these great 90s? I wanna give you guys a little insight on how I make it look so nice. All right, so now that all of these are stripped out and you have all of this sheathing at about the same height, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, this one probably just flipped up a little bit when I was going, but now that you have all these at the same height, and it's the same whether you only have a couple connectors or whatever. Get them all the same height, about a quarter of an inch out of the connector. Now it's time to start working the grounds. And I always work the biggest ground first. So, as you'll notice, I've got that first ground in there. And I tucked it through the back side of those wires. So I didn't wrap it around either of these. I went through the back. So that's what I'm going to do with every single one of these. So this next one is my 10 gauge wire. Bear with me, this is kind of hard with holding the phone. This next one is my 10 gauge wire. I'm not gonna come around this way. I'm not gonna go around that way. I'm gonna go through where the easiest, closest path is, which is right there. So I'm gonna end up doing that with all of these. I'm gonna take the easiest, closest path without wrapping them around a wire. It's the art of covering up those bins with all the other wires. So it looks like at the end, all you see is that last bend. I take every single ground and I bend it at that same point right there, bring it down in a line, turn it at every single screw. On these smaller grounds, 12 gauge and below, I will double them up to save a little bit of time and I'll show you what that looks like when I get this finished. So something you want to keep in mind when you're doing these panels is how your wires come into the panel also dictates how good your panel looks. So if your wires coming in are all bent up and hard to deal with and not nice and smooth like this, unrolled nice and neatly, you're gonna have problems making a nice panel. So you wanna have all those wires nice and smooth. You don't want them all bent up. So I get asked a lot, how do you turn those perfect 90s with your pieces of wire? So I'll just give you a little demonstration. So you get that down to where it's going and then wherever that screw is, like say that screw is right here, I just put my finger right where that screw is and then I just crank it around my thumb. Notice how my thumb never moved? And it's not a perfect 90, but you see how you get that nice turn right in there. And in case you didn't know, you do want to have a little bit of nail there. If you don't have a little bit of nail, your thumb's going to be sore by the end of the day. And if you're not used to this, your thumb's going to be sore anyway. So when you're doubling these grounds up, you wanna pick two wires that are close to each other. For instance, if you have one wire here and one wire way in the back there, that's stupid. You wanna use two wires right next to each other. So keep that in mind too when you're doing wire management. So here's what the grounds look like all finished up. Now, I personally like to zip tie these. Contrary to popular belief, it's okay to tie wrap these inside of a panel. It's plastic, non-conductive. As long as you don't leave any sharp points on it, you're good to go. So now we move on to making up these neutrals. Um, neutrals would be, in most instances, this white wire. There are circumstances where the white wire is not a neutral. So on these two 40 volt circuits, we use this white wire as a hot leg. We just have to re-identify it as it comes into this panel. So I'm gonna re-identify it by either black tape, um, you can use marker or paint marker. One of those will be accepted. And again, when I do these neutrals, I start with the biggest one first every time. So now I've got this neutral set exactly where I want it. Notice I'm not gonna be covering up these screws, the ground bar, I don't like that. I also know that there's a lot of people that'll push it to this corner. Also don't like that because you're covering up all these side knockouts. I just like to plan for the future. Uh, I just like to keep everything. I kind of look at this as an alleyway, a trough as you may, for the wires to go down. So that's how I like to manage mine. I did the same thing with the neutrals. I went the shortest route, whatever was easiest, right to there. So now you're gonna see these hots come around here and over the top right into the breakers. So all these neutrals are gonna get covered up. These screws are still gonna be accessible. All your knockouts are gonna be accessible. That's how we like to do a panel. So now what I like to do is map out how these breakers are going in. <clears throat> I like to put the biggest breaker first and then work down from biggest to smallest. But once I get past these two pole breakers, I put the arc fault in there. Kind of makes and then i can close up all these neutrals so i took that arc fault breaker i unraveled 
that neutral on it and then I just tucked it right in there and that's going to be pretty hard to see once I tie all these up. All right, got my neutrals all made up to the neutral bar. As you'll see, this got a little short. Um, that's okay. You're never going to see that once all the hots get made up, panels done. You're not going to see that at all. So that's what the grounds and neutrals look like. I could put another one here. I don't know that I will. Make sure this copper is never past this black part right here. If you've got copper out here, it needs redone. One more little tip, when you're putting these in the screws, you always wanna put them in as the screw tightens. So see how that's stubbed in on the top? The screw tightens this way. So on this other side, it's gonna go in the bottom because the screw tightens this way. Those are just two little tips that could help and prevent some maintenance in the long run. When you're trying to figure out where these wires go, all you have to do is set this 90 right where it's gonna line up with all these. And then this cut mark on these square D breakers, well, I call it a cut mark, but this edge right here where that panel cover rests right at the end of this D, that's where you cut these. And it'll be perfect every single time. Watch this. See that? Now I've got those all perfectly in line and every single one of them will be the same now. All right, so now you're starting to see these take shape, getting all those lined up going down here, right into their breakers, right amperages to where they go. Another thing you wanna keep in mind is, make sure that this doesn't extend out past the edge of this, because if it does, you're gonna have problems. All those wires need to be behind this face cover. I'm putting this first zip tie on. So now, if one of these are out of line, once you get that first zip tie on, you can move that up or down. Get these looking just right. Now I'll add the next one and then adjust them again. And you just repeat the process going up and that's what it looks like. So as you'll notice up here, you've got some white wires coming in here. That's okay, because they're going to these breakers. So you've got this nice and uniform. I'm gonna adjust this a little bit here, so that wraps up better. These zip ties are not tight at all. Like, they're just snug. They're just holding them kind of in place so that it looks good. That's all they're there for. And then you've still got access to your screws here. And look at all the space you've got. You've got plenty of space to add wires anywhere you need. If you need to access these, all you gotta do is spin this zip tie around and you can cut the end off. It's that easy. No risk of cutting into these hot wires or any of that. All right, so that's a wrap on uh, how to make up the electrical panel the way I do it. And as always, be on my cushion, leave your mask.